Hi, my name is Heather Parsons. I'm the Director of Federal Affairs for the American Occupational Therapy Association. Since last Tuesday's election, I've had a lot of people ask me about what to expect for a repeal of the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Um, I thought that I'd take the time to talk a little bit about what we're expecting, the process that may happen, as well as what we'll be paying attention to in a repeal and a replacement bill. The first thing to remember is that the process for repeal is complicated, that it's actually going to take time. On January 4th, when the new Congress is sworn in, there won't be an immediate repeal of the Affordable Care Act. The House runs based off a of majority. So if you have one, one vote in the majority, then that vote passes, it's passed out of the House, and it's done. But the Senate is much more complicated. Typically in the Senate, you need 60 votes to pass a bill into the law. This is called a fill. This is because of the filibuster, which is no longer just standing on the Senate floor and talking. The filibuster really means you have to have 60 votes to pass something. There are a few ways around the filibuster. Um, the Senate could change the rules and let things pass with 50 votes. This isn't very likely because Senate Republicans know that two or ten years down the road, Sen uh, Democrats will be in charge again and they don't want that 50 vote threshold. They want to make sure that when they're in the minority, they have a say. So we, I think that 60 votes is going to, to stay the law of the land. One other option that the Senate has is something called budget reconciliation. So budget reconciliation is the one time um, where the Senate only needs 50 votes to pass something um, out of the Senate. So budget reconciliation was used to help pass the Affordable Care Act, and I'm pretty sure budget reconciliation is going to be used to repeal parts of the Affordable Care Act. But just like I said, the process is complicated. There's an extra layer here. Budget reconciliation has two rules that go along with it. One is that the items have to only relate to the budget. They can't be policy related. And the second is anything you do under budget reconciliation cannot increase the debt. Now Senate Republicans may choose to change those rules, but that's typically, um, those are typically the rules of the road for budget reconciliation. So as you can see, a blanket repeal um, is much more complicated once you run into the Senate. So I think we're going to see um, nuance and detail and parts of the Affordable Care Act repealed and other parts that remain in place um, if it's if possible. That runs into the second uh, main point that I wanted to make, which is the policy is complicated. Um, and the repeal, with the repeal process being complicated, um, that makes it doubly so. We're going to need time to fill in the details, and the House and the Senate are going to need time to fill in the real details of any ACA reform. Now, one thing that I do recommend, um, if you're really interested in the details to look at, is this document. It's called A Better Way. Um, this document was put together by House Republicans and came out last June. Um, the House has not really changed in power. The same leadership is there. Um, and so this blueprint, which you can find at better.gop and also on the AOTA website, is, is going to be where they start on an Affordable Care Act repeal. So we have 35 pages, but it's going to take a long time to also fill in those details. Which brings me into my third point, um, which is that there's actually little appetite by anyone in Congress to have 20 million people suddenly uninsured. So a blanket repeal of the Affordable Care Act that just immediately took effect would put 20 million people off the insurance rolls. So I think you'll see Congress, if they pass, once they pass a repeal of the bill in whatever form that takes, it's going to, um, it would actually, the policy would take effect somewhere down the road so that they have time to put in new policies that will hopefully um, keep, let 20 million people keep, in, keep their insurance. Um, along those lines is the fourth point, which is that there seems to be 
little appetite to undo some of the insurance reforms that were part of the Affordable Care Act. So letting people stay on their parents' insurance until they were 26, limiting the uh, lifetime and annual caps on insurance, and then most importantly, um, the pre-existing condition exclusion. So before the Affordable Care Act, insurance companies could exclude people who had a pre-existing condition. Um, since then, that's not been allowed, and I don't foresee that piece being repealed. Now, whether or not insurance companies can charge people different amounts of premiums because of a pre-existing condition, that's going to remain to be seen, and um, there's, there's nothing about that in the blueprint. So that brings me to what is AOTA going to be watching? We are looking at what gets repealed um, and what stakes do we have in what is repealed. And we're also going to be looking at what takes its place and um, whether we support or oppose the provisions in what takes its place. Um, always looking at it from a perspective of both occupational therapy and then um, access to health insurance for the people that we serve. So we'll be watching to see if those insurance reforms um, stay or whether those are repealed. We'll be watching current the Obamacare marketplace and to see um, right now there are some mandated benefits in that marketplace including habilitation. We're going to be watching to see what happens with that and um, what that marketplace is replaced with. We'll be looking at changes to Medicaid. Um, there's some talk of changes to the Medicaid program as a whole, um, but also how Medicaid expansion that occurred under the Affordable Care Act, what happens there. Um, we will definitely be advocating to maintain mandated benefits like early periodic um, screening, the EPSDT, um, benefits or early periodic diagnostic screening and testing benefits under Medicaid. Um, so if there were any attempts to repeal or to change those benefits, we would be paying very close attention to that. Um, we're also going to be looking at changes to Medicare, both traditional Medicare and changes to the current innovation programs that are going on. We do expect to see some changes. Um, particularly to maybe mandated programs that have recently come out, like the Comprehensive Care for Joint Replacement. Um, those, those may be programs that are pretty quickly um, changed. There are a few other provisions we'll be watching, such as what happens to Children's Health Insurance Program and what happens to mental health parity provisions. But like I said, there's going to be plenty of time, um, lots to watch, and what I can promise you is that AOTA will keep you informed and that we will pay close attention to all of these issues and let you know what we support and where we think um, that you need to take action.